we'll discuss eligibility rule today and after that if your questions are specific to eligibility rule we can take that after uh, we do the eligibility rule the understanding of eligibility rules questions other than eligibility rules, we can take that first like this session is basically one thing we have to cover is eligibility rules which I don't think there's any other easier way to understand it. And I realized it a lot later in my career that if I would have this perspective earlier, I would have learned it a lot easier. And this concept, which I'll share in a moment, you can apply it to anywhere within the Workday ecosystem, whether you're working as a financial consultant or an HCM consultant, wherever you have to create a logic. So it just requires few basic concepts which we learned during the school and the college time which is your if conditions and your your concept of and and or logic that's all so i'll add one here okay so i've created another element for your allowance plan so Renika, what you can do is edit your plan and change this from uh and see this is an allowance plan you're using a standard base pay so let me just do one for you and then you can change it on the others. It's an allowance plan, right? We use a compensation element which relates to it. All right, so you have given no default value, that's okay. You've also given no currency, that's also okay. This is your eligibility rule, let's open that. When that opens up, let's see. So your question was, how do we ensure that the employees from that country are getting values in that particular currency. See, one observation I have is you have the same eligibility rule at the plan level and also at the plan profile level. Now, what will happen is this is how system, let's say I'm I'm talking on behalf of system. So this is our system we'll see. Okay, this date, this plan was created effective first 10. This is the name and everything. We have a buy of D, we have some defaults. It then comes to plan eligibility. If there is a hire, if there's a transfer or any worker transaction happening, where employees become eligible for this, but you have used the same here, that means they'll be eligible for all of these. It's very much incorrect. If you have system fault, it will be the consultant fault who have set it up this way. And your eligibility rule is defining that job family is this. So you have already created that. Anyone from job family is getting this. The next thing you have to do is you have to have specific eligibility rules. That executive is from somewhere in Europe. Executive is from somewhere in India. If I open okay. an allowance plan, which we created, so this is from the last session this week, you would observe that we have it location specific. That at the plan level, it is describing whether it's an executive or director. So same to your case, instead of executive or director, you have it as job profile or job family. So you've already filtered them out. Now within that category, let's say there are about 150 employees who comes under that particular category, which you have, which is XPD executives. Out of that, you have to put them based on location. So this is what you have to change. Let's see compensation setup, and I'll ask you this, Renuka. How was your experience in setting this up? Because I think the only complexity is with the eligibility rule. The overall setup is pretty simple and straightforward. Please, please mark my words on this. When you join any organization or you're part of an organization currently using Workday, the best way to learn, like I'm already mentoring you on everything related to Workday, it seems. But after we finish the course, uh, whenever that happens, you're on your own and you're stuck somewhere. You have two choices, basically three, but you have to exhaust them in a priority. So make a note of this because I don't want you to forget it. This is a life lesson, which you can literally use anywhere, but make a note of this. So at your real job, if you're stuck, specifically as a workday consultant, there are three things you can do. First, go to workday community. Search for answers. Even if you did not understand the requirement, type in the keywords that are there in the requirement. 
try your best. That is the first way. If you still don't find it, second way, look at existing setup. This only applies in real time scenarios, not in this tenant, because this tenant has a lot of dirty data, unorganized data. So I would not recommend you referring here for solutions, right? Third, ask someone in your team. I'll be honest with you, when I started, my approach was completely opposite. I used to ask someone first, then go to the existing setup and then go to work the community. And I realized it's not the right way, multiple times. And now that I do the right way, I see the benefit of it. Not that I diversify myself with more knowledge, but I'm able to add in some creativity to my solutions and own the solutions that I do. So always remember you have three choices whenever you are stuck. First, go to community. You will get access once you join a company as a workday consultant on the very first day. In the very first week, you will have all the security access you need, plus access to a GMS tenant, access to your workday community. So your workday community is the Bible of workday. Right? So that is your first, the second, look at the existing setup. So in this case also, I showed you the other day that when I was creating an eligibility rule, I referenced an existing one. So mimicking something is learning in workday. And the third is ask for help. Okay. And if still doesn't happen, just email it to, sorry, email it to Zarentech and they'll forward the question to you. And that would be your last resort. All right, Renika, go ahead. You have to be in the edit. I'm not adding it here, so I'll let you add that. You are in the view section right now. You're viewing a package, so you won't have that plus sign. You have to be in the edit mode. The, with compensation, it becomes very easy. It's only the initial few times where when you are creating the eligibility rule, you might take some time in understanding how it's created, in understanding, finding the right field. But once you know how to get it done, you will literally repeat what you have done just with different values. So for example, let's say your company's compensation is defined on job profile, specifically on job profile. And your company has hundreds of job profiles, which means there might be hundreds of compensation eligibility rules. For each job profile, you will have eligibility rule. So once you have created a couple of times that my compensation eligibility rule equalizes profile is equal to X, Y, Z, and you have used it in a grade. You created another one, job profile is equal to A, B, C. So that's all. You have learned the process. Now you just have to change the values of X, Y, Z, A, B, C anytime a new job profile comes in. It's just that first time understanding. And also to everyone, compensation, don't force compensation eligibility rule to be learned in one day or in one session. You can see everything in Workday, understand the concept of it because there's a lot diversity in every topic that we do. Specifically, these eligibility rules where we can use limitless fields. So I'll talk about that as well. So that takes time. Uh, finding the right field, that takes time. But doing yourself, that should not take time. You should know how to do it. Even if you're doing it wrong, not at all a problem. Trust me. At companies, if you're doing it wrong, they don't judge you on that. But you're not doing it, you don't know how to do it, that's a problem. Because if you're doing it wrong, they'll correct you. They won't judge you. But if you don't know how to do it, it will be a big problem. Your grades gives you the range. Plans tell you what plans you're eligible for whether you're an hourly employee, whether you are a salaried employee, apart from that, do you have allowance? So you don't need to connect it to the grades because an employee can be at a, like a C executive grade, but still an hourly employee, though it's a very rare scenario. Or an employee is an, is an individual contributor, is an intern, and is a salary plan is on a salary plan so these are two independent elements 
which runs through your eligibility rules. That is why we put all of them together in a package. So now, whoever is eligible for this, they look for these grades and will be paid out using these plans. So that is how compensation is. They are not connected, but quote unquote, they are connected in one or the other way. Not like uh, you don't have to look at it like supervisory organizations are connected with cost centers and company. No, that concept only applies to organizations. Here, grades has its own identity, compensation plans has its own identity, and they have they are driven by the that's why in your notes, eligibility rule. What is eligibility rule? So let me give you a real time example. Every company, I don't know how. Uh, I've not seen Indian companies or Asia Pacific companies having this, but in US, employees do retire from a company and they automatically become a member of a supervisory organization called as Retiree. It's a work delivered organization of type Retiree, and I think we will, might have that. So, in that case, employee is no longer getting paid a salary but they get paid an allowance. So in that case, they are associated with a grade and there is a plan. It may not be a salary or an hourly plan, but still they are getting paid through allowances right. driven by your eligibility rule. Okay, That's why I said that when you do something, whenever you're practicing something, understand why we are doing it, what will that do? So that will help give you a better perspective give you a better picture of uh, what the concept is. Again, you will have to do some notes, draw some notes, I would say. All right. What I draw, you have to draw. So this is how we understand and never forget concept of eligibility rules. And this is, I'm sharing eligibility rules in general. You can apply to benefits eligibility rule. Whenever you have to create a condition rule, basically in the system, you can apply this logic. Now, what happens is we want to create a rule which says my location is equal to United States. So my value of A, I'm going to add, uh, you know, these boxes here so that we can do some examples together. Okay. So you guys have to answer me. My first scenario is I want my country to be United States. So I'll take that. So my value of A will be a field. If I if you see there, even in my these eligibility rules. This is a field. Wherever you see this sign here, the, you can see a different sign here. There are 10 or 12 different types of field in the system, irrespective of what the logo looks like. It's not logo. It's These are called as a class report fields. We'll talk about this when we do reporting. right? So when you see this image, it could be this image or any other image. That means we are using a field. Okay, so your value of A, even in the system, it's defined as source or external field. Sorry, source, external field, my bad. Or a condition rule. We'll talk about this condition rule later. Okay, so my value of A would be something as a consultant, you have to find some value which understand country. Okay, so let's say you have a field in the system which is called as country. Now you want to equalize it based on what type it is. Like in this case, it's a multi instance. I know because I'm working in this. So in the relational operator, you would get some fields. And based on what you are using, your value of relational operator change. But for layman, it's basically equalizing, like it's an equal to sign. In some shape, it's called as any in the selection list. In some way, it's called 
in the selection list for sum is equal to for sum, depending upon what type you're using here, your value of relation operator will differ, but you are trying to equalize it. So it's basically an equal to, but in different shapes and forms. And then your value of B will be United States. So your eligibility rule is simple as country is equal to United States, where you have to find a field which understands, which can understand, okay, United States is a country and I'm trying to equate it. This is a very simple example. Let's do a little complex one. You want to have something which says country is equal to United States and employee is equal to regular. So what will I do is I'll use this existing rule in the system, which is, let's say I name this rule as, you know, rule 11. So what will I do is rule 11 and employee type. And I'll, for every row, rule 11 will have one row, employee type will have one row. That will be, that if it's true, which will be this, and employee type is ready. A little confusing, understood. Let's put that in practice. So I'll use this existing rule, which is Velvet Swiss, to demo what I'm trying to explain. So I'll use the task create eligibility rule. I'll give it a name, Velvet Eligibility Location and Employee Time. Now in the first row, I will use not an external field, but a condition rule. I can use both. My condition rule is Velvet Swiss. Now, since this is a condition rule, you don't see any logo to this. Though, in this condition, we have a field being used. Now that it's a condition rule in itself, I can use it in another eligibility rule. So based on, since this is a condition rule already, so my values will differ. What I'm trying to do is I'm making it equal to that Velvet Swiss, you can see is yes. You can skip the comparison type for now. This is more of a reporting thing. So in the first row, I have done 50% of my job, which is my country should be Switzerland or my location should be Switzerland. Now I'll add another row using this plus sign. I'll add the row first, then we'll talk about this and an or operator. I want a field which can capture the employee time. So as a new consultant, I'll. it's a lot of hit and trial. Definitely working with fields is a lot of hit and trial, but the more you experience, the more you get an understanding of, you can create those. So I'll select, so let's see what best we can get. You can see there are some that exist. One quick observation I can tell is, this is a field, the other two are not. The other two are, are already conditioned rules using some fields. Why I'm saying the second one, the middle one is a field because it has this symbol. You can also check, go to the related actions. You can see it's a report field, which we are using. And another thing to remember, which you don't have to remember, it's very inherent, very observable here is, with every field you will see this compensation as a suffix. Why? Because when you are creating eligibility rules to be used in your compensation functional area, you are only allowed to use which are dedicated for compensation, sorry, fields that are dedicated for compensation, and you can see them in the authorized usage. It's eligible for compensation. You cannot use this field in any generic. There are generic condition rules as well, eligibility rules. You cannot use them there. You will have an, another field 
which might be of the same name but will not have a compensation in the suffix. So how do I know? I can either explore this. This one says employer type is regular and companies was, so I'm not convinced with this. So this is using multiple fields here, but it's also using other locations. So I don't want to use this. If I have to use this, I'll definitely read the description. It says field name is this, returns the applicable worker subtype. So this is giving me a subtype. Now, if you recall, let me quickly show you what that means. So if I want to create a position, anyway, I won't create one, I'll just giving a quick, you would see here something called as worker type and then worker subtype when you create a position. And in our example here, Jeez. Oh, wait, did, did it got refreshed? Again, employ time. You go to the related actions, you read it. Returns the applicable worker subtype. Okay, so this is your type and this is your subtype. And the field name also says, employ or contingent worker type. It's either of those because these are the only two types which work their loves. Since we don't have compensation for contingent worker, so it has to be something which we fill here. So we usually select the regular. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. Now observe the relational operator. This is a single instance field. So my relational operator value will have these many options. Not all will apply, but what we are trying to do is something which is closest to the equal sign, which is in the selection list. So I'll use that and give it a value. We'll first search what are the applicable values. It will give you all of those which are in the list of your subtypes. This is the one that I need. The other one got removed, so I can again click a plus sign here. Use the eligibility rule. Now my relational operator value will differ equal to this name. Velvet. This and regular. Let me save it so that we don't lose it. Okay. You can add as many number of rows as you want, but the complexity will continue to increase. You can also read the derived logic. I didn't write it. The system automatically writes it down for us. It says that employee contingent type in the selection list is regular. And this is equal to Y, which means your country is Swiss. So anyone who is in Switzerland and a regular employee, wherever I'll use this eligibility rule, that is where the employee will be eligible for that particular element of compensation. Um, see, fields... We create condition rule using fields only. Like this one, you see, this is a condition rule. If you open this, it is using a field. What I'm doing is I'm leveraging this again in my rule, in another rule. That's the only difference. Here. We create rules using fields only, but we have the ability to use existing rules also. Now, let's say if and a condition arise that if employee is from Switzerland and regular and the job profile should be something else. So what do I do? I use this rule again. Let's create that. Create eligibility rule. You can see there are multiple types of eligibility rule. So the one that we are learning is compensation. All the others also works the same way. In this case, I can now use my new rule, which is Velvet Swiss regular. This one, again, my equals to, yes. And then I'll add another field here, which will be job profile. Always, always keep it a habit when you're new to the system until you go at an advanced level. Go to the related actions of everything that you're using. 
understand, read, just read it. Reporting is a lot about reading. Security is a lot about reading. Business process is a lot about reading. And then observe. Okay. So I can use this. Now, since this is a multi-instance field, you can see here it's a multi-instance. So you don't need to worry about the types right now. Just giving a small example. So your values will differ slightly. In earlier case, it was in the selection list. Now it's any in the selection list. But this is closest to your equal sign. And I'll pick one of the job profiles that I have. Or I'll pick all three. So I could have picked my family here for workday analysts, but there's nothing wrong in doing this. It's just a lengthy of it. So now what I did, Mahadis, I used an existing rule. So I saved time. I don't have to recreate this. And I just added another row of here, which will then work with work for me. So I'll name it Velvet Swiss plus regular job profile is there you go so this i would call would be your understanding at an intermediate level that you are using existing eligibility rules in another eligibility rule now how would this work now if you recall during your high school or during your you know undergraduation or post graduation sometime in our life if you have gone to school or college we have been taught about and and all logics, okay. whether it's computer science, whether it's electronics. These are some basic logics that we all have learned early in our education time, right? And how does this work? If you remember, if one and one equals one, one and zero equals zero, right? The same logic applies here. A little differently and how does that work so let's say i'll edit this and go in the edit mode and i change this from and to all these are the only two options now how will this work is for this condition to work <clears throat> or for someone to be eligible for this condition they have to be eligible for this or this earlier it was and 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 so it was in conjunction that employee must be from Switzerland and a regular and must be from one of these job profiles. Now, if the employee is from Switzerland and regular, still that employee will be eligible irrespective of if they are in the job profile or not. Or if they are of any of these job profiles and not from Switzerland and regular, they'll still be eligible. That is how your and and all logic works. Now, there are eligibility rules which goes up to 10 rows, 12 rows, and a combination of and and or using these parentheses. You see the second column. We won't go there because that becomes a lot confusing. So I'll request you to first focus on working with basic eligibility rules. Go with one row at a time. Right? Try with the most basic one, which is your location. In this also, right now, what I'm using is I'm using country of location and I'm equalizing it with Switzerland. You have to create a logic where you use a field and that will be a trial and error. You have to use a field so that you can equalize it with the locations that you have created in the system. For example, on top of my head, I have Renka's location like XPD Boston. So she will have to find a field here which understands XPD Boston. So that will be a trial and error. And once you have it, you put that in your allowance plans or in your salary plans. Right? So that is why, and once you learn this logic, so if I do A equals to B, always whenever you are in a huddle of finding eligibility rules, take a piece of paper or any notepad and pen, write down A equals to B. Okay, and then write down what is my value of A and what is my value of B? Your value of B will be coming from your requirement. What you have to find is a field that can capture that requirement. And this will come automatically. This is not a, uh, a no-brainer. But you will have a value of B. Let's say they want 
you have a requirement which says that we want the com uh, eligibility rules based on job codes. So you have a job code, you just have to find a field which understands that job code, which can capture that job code, right? And this could be anything. If it requires you to create multiple rows of eligibility rules, you can do that. But I'll say start with small, start with basic. Once you're familiar with this, now you can also reverse it, right? It does not always have to be equal to. You can also have it not equal to. But that would be a little intermediate level. Another example is, let's say I want to do a date comparison, okay? Eligibility rule based on your date. So what we do is, okay? So I'll pick up a field. Let's say it's based on your higher date. So I'll select something as higher date. And then I'll go through the list of which one is giving me. It's a report field higher date. It has that compensation. Returns the applicable higher date. This is work that delivered. I can use it in my compensation eligibility. So I'll use this. Now with higher date, since if you notice something, the type is date. So my value of relational operator will change accordingly. C is blank, not equal to, greater than, greater than, equal to. And based on, let's say I want it greater than, equal to, my comparison value operator will open up and I can put in a date. Let's say I wanted someone hired greater than this. Now you can add multiple rows here, and add in job profile is this, location is this. You can go as deep as you want, but only for practice, start with one row at a time, then two rows, then go up to three rows, then play around with the and and or logic. Obviously, I understand that validation won't be there, but I don't see that as a blocker in learning these. Every time you have to create a eligibility rule, you will have some requirement. Let's say your requirement is that you need to create an eligibility rule where employee is from Boston, and is in a job profile of what we give, let's say workday analyst. Okay, so as a consultant, what you will do is you will run this report first. Compensation eligibility rule. Oh, there are too many actually, it's not a possibility. I was just trying to demo that you can actually look at existing rules as well to see if something like this exists. But let's say it does not exist. So you go about creating one using the option this you know that there are two fields to it so on a piece of paper and pen i put that one is location location or country which should equal to boston and the other one is job profile which should equalize to workday analyst now once you have it on your once you have this somewhere written now then it's easier for you to go in the system and create it. Right? So what you do is you find a field which can capture your Boston value. So we'll go here, we'll put as country, and you will always use the field which are suffixed with compensation. You have that, and you select the closest one which gives like equal to, so that's any in the selection list, and this will change depending upon the type of field, and this would be now, Boston is not a country, so we won't get that. So let's say it's United States. Okay, But your condition is specific to Boston. So that means you need to find a different field here. Okay, so let's search something related to location, like just work location or primary work location. So this is like, um, not this, let me just search with location. In this, you would see a lot of different and other rules created. So I can leverage this. There's something called as all locations. I can use that. I just copy this. All countries of location, but this would still not give me Boston. This is again a different field. So let me see trial and error. This is what you have to city of location, country of location. Why is it not giving that? In this, you can use the location hierarchies that we have created. In mine are created with the word power. I'll use XPD, for example. 
that will show you those location and artifacts that you have created. And that will cover all your locations, if there are any locations associated with this. Now, another thing is job profile or job family. So you find something related to that. These all, I can say these all are existing condition rules because I do not see a symbol next to them. See, this is, you can use this. It covers your family and family group. Any in the selection list. And we'll put, this will cover all your profiles and families. So that's how you create an eligibility rule. And there is no way to learn everything because the primary thing to learn here is the concept of A equals to B, where A is your source external field or an existing condition rule, equal to is your relational operator, and B is your comparison value. You will already know the value of B in most cases. You have to find the right field which captures it in the value of A. And in an advanced version, you have to play around the AND and ALL logic. That's all eligibility rule is. Now you can apply this concept anywhere. You want to create a business process condition the same way. You want to create an eligibility rule somewhere else the same way. You want to create an alert rule the same way. A equals to B. So in your notes where you have your notes from day one, where you have these concepts written out, go back to that page. And wherever you have written core compensation eligibility rules, write down A equals to B in capital bold letters. So you will always, there's no way for you to miss this. Contingent work is usually uh, like we'll run the business process. It's not a problem. Uh, but again, that's hiring another employee. That's like hiring another candidate in the system, which again is restricted. I can walk you through the business process of how it looks like. I would recommend that uh, if your company uses Workday, then something I'll definitely walk you through because it will be very beneficial. I do have access to this, but I do need to set it up first. So before we conclude this session, I'll request you all to please practice compensation. It's very, very important, but yes. It's not something that you'll be doing every day, but not knowing these things is a very, very big miss. And a lot of interview questions comes if you have compensation in your resumes and your LinkedIn's. And all questions are related to your eligibility rules, grades, plans. So make sure that you're very much clear on the concepts. 